Kenyon Farrell. Kenyon Farrell is the former executive director for Queers for Economic Justice and is currently the exec serves on the executive committee of Connect to and Center of Gay and Lesbian Studies. He is also a renowned author and writer, including letters from young activists. Is that correct? Okay. Kenyon Farrell, please. Thank you. I also want to thank the organizers of the event uh, for uh, inviting me to be here today. Um, there are two quotes um, uh, that came to mind uh, last week at the um, execution of, of Troy Davis, and the first was um, also from James Baldwin, which is, uh, to be black and conscious is to be in a constant state of rage. I was enraged by the state-sanctioned execution of Troy Davis. Not 24 hours later, my fire-hot rage would turn to stony indignation upon learning that the same set of bureaucrats who refused to stop this execution removed the death penalty from the sentence of a white man who professed to the guilt of the violence he was charged with. These two incidences, clearly linked to send a message to us, were an articulation of the obvious. Black bodies, irrespective of facts, are always criminal. Public displays of violence against black bodies insofar as it reiterates the role that black suffering plays in making white supremacy coherent in everyday life is the preferred method of articulating patriarchal white supremacist control. So while we mourn Troy Davis's death and all of the things that it raises for us, racism, the death penalty, the prison industrial complex, police brutality, the historic trauma of lynchings, etc., I want us to also think about um, our sort of discourses of innocence. For while it may make us feel more righteous in our defense of Troy Davis and others like him, um, it may, and, and also for those who are languishing behind prison walls, we must also come to accept in many ways to be black and innocent is an oxymoron in the planet in which we live. <laughs> so not only must we think critically about our politics of innocence, if we are invested, yes, in saving individuals from the jaws of the death penalty, but also in radically altering the conditions that create his existence. We must also look critically at the symbolism of black subjugation that exists in the death penalty, the prison, but in also everyday neighborhood policing stop and frisk methods, right? The communities that have become disappeared through gentrification and that are replaced by markers of white supremacist dominance, right, in everyday ways. The coffee shop, the dog park, white babies being pushed around by black and brown men. All of these, to me, are forms of terror that speak to the everyday and also to the exceptional. And our politics have often failed to move beyond policy and get to the core logics that make these policies possible. For me, that means that we must, that in order to make sense out of Troy Davis's death, we must think about it as, as, as symbol by the state, that public displays of black death and suffering are really necessary to make white supremacy coherent. From Rodney King to Hurricane Katrina to the earthquake in Haiti to Troy Davis, episodic displays of black suffering are ever present. The second quote that came to my mind um, at, at uh, the night of, of, of Troy's execution was from a comrade, uh, Afro-Brazilian scholar, Joao Costa Vargas. Um, in a very unpopular speech he gave this spring at the Critical Ethnic Studies Conference in UC Riverside, noted, why doesn't black suffering and death appeal and effectively mobilize beyond the seemingly unique catastrophic moments? Why is it that when black suffering and death are expressed, they are almost always forced into a conversation that focuses on the, experience, the experiences of non-blacks. Let us remember Troy Davis not simply by calling attention to the need to end the death penalty, though that is important. Let us not simply use it as a call to end imprisonment as a form of, of uh, as a, imprisonment as a form of punishment, though that is important, and both are very necessary. But if we are serious about ending state violence, we must also be willing to 
look to a less cynical future politics, one where the mundane and the episodic and the extraordinary violence upon the black body, sim uh, symbolizing degradation, suffering, subjugation, and death, does not exist and is not the thing to make all other life relevant. Thank you.